Well, welcome back to the Broom Tree Podcast. I'm so happy that you guys are here with us today for a very special bonus episode. We had some very good friends of ours, Nick and Olivia Putman, come over to the house uh, and shoot this episode with us. We had so much fun. This is from way, way back from the vault, if you will. This is months and months and months ago. Um, but we had them come over. They're very talented musician friends of ours. In fact, Olivia has done almost every episode you've heard. Olivia has done the intro for us. She's done the intro and the outro music. She made it herself. Uh, super talented, super gifted. We're honored to know them and to call them friends. Um, and they came over to our house and we did a blind reaction video. Uh, never done one of those before, but we did a blind music uh, reaction to Corey Asbury's Pioneer album, and you can label it Christian or non-Christian, that's totally up to you. Here's what I'll tell you. Lyrically, in the way it's just made with the, the, the what does Olivia call it, like the sonic sounds and all that fancy stuff, um, it is one of the most beautifully written and played albums that I've ever listened to. Uh, so we had a ton of laughs, ton of cries, and a ton of really good conversation between each song, talking about what it, what we felt uh, and, and what we heard and what we maybe thought the intention was uh, behind the lyric, or at least what the lyric meant to us. Um, and so hopefully this challenges you as you listen to your own worship music, uh, that you challenge what you're listening to, um, what, what are you getting out of it? What do you mean? How does it impact you and really taking those thoughts internally instead of just singing the words because we do it at church or we do it because it's what we feel like we're supposed to do. Um, and so we had a ton of fun making this episode. If you're real quick though, if you're watching on YouTube, you will notice. And again, y'all, this is from way, way back in the podcast. Um, my camera cut out for like 20, 25 minutes and we didn't even realize because um, we were still learning how to use all of our equipment back then. But because it's a blind reaction, you can't reshoot a blind reaction because then it's not a blind reaction anymore. Um, and so we made a funny little graphic for when that happens. So if you're listening on Apple or Spotify, it doesn't make a difference to you. But if you're watching on YouTube, uh, just know that that's what that is. Have some grace for us. But again, we had so much fun making this episode and all, all the links that you need to like, follow and stream Olivia and Nick's music will be in the comments below. So if you haven't already hit pause, go like, follow, subscribe, stream, share, all the stuff, support them. They're such good friends and they make such good content. Um, and so we love them and we had so much fun making this and we hope that you guys have just as much fun listening to it. Um, so we love you guys and enjoy today's bonus episode, Corey Asbury's Pioneer Album. Here we go. Well, hello, Broomtree Podcast. Um, there's my corny intro that Amanda always gives me a hard time for. Um, I'm excited. We have kind of a special episode today. We have uh, two very special guests, very great friends of ours, been friends for a long time now. Um, some of our closest friends I think we've ever had in our life. And so uh, the Putman family is here. Uh, cue uh, applause noise, but um, we're honored to have you guys with us. Uh, we've been friends now for a minute. Mm -hmm. and um, been through a lot of highs and lows together as, as couples, not just in ministry, but in marriage and life in general. Um, you guys were there when our daughter was born. I wish we would have met earlier so I could say, like, we were at your wedding or y'all were at ours <laughs> or, like, something cool. Um, but, no, we've just been friends for a minute, and uh, I'm honored to have you guys um, here uh, to do this with yeah. us. So I'm excited. I think we met you guys, like, a month after you got married. So we were yeah, almost pretty much. Yeah, pretty yeah. Much. yeah. 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 It was early on. I was Very trying to buy your dad's Tacoma, like yeah. the yeah. night we met. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And now and, it's my uh, truck. And now, yeah. Yeah, and now it's yours. So no, I'm excited. And then also, if you guys hear that right there, <laughs> the uh, my turned 11 months old today, uh, sweet baby Joe is in the corner jamming to Miss Rachel. So uh, we'll try and keep it as quiet as we can, but. Um, I think she's maybe going to the bathroom. I can't tell. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Um, but we're excited. So kind of what we're doing today, uh, we brought y'all on, not just because y'all are great friends, um, but y'all are the most musically gifted people that we know. Um, and particularly Olivia uh, with your singing and then Nick with your rapping and, and the different genres of music that we've seen you do. Um, but... What we're doing today, we're going to kind of be doing a blind reaction, if you will. Uh, I say if you will, that's exactly what it is, um, to Corey Asbury's new album. Um, I think, and we'll have you guys on the like the main podcast episode soon to kind of share our stories and stuff. But um, one of the things I think we all unified on, are you going to take her downstairs? One of the things we all unified on really early on was kind of our experience with church. And then 
Corey released a song a couple months ago. Uh, we all listened to it individually, and I remember we were talking at dinner one night about it, about how we really enjoyed it. And then, unknown to me, the rest of the album came out. And mm-hmm. you guys were telling us just the other day how much you enjoyed it. And so I turned on just the first song that literally doesn't even have words to it, <laughs> and immediately ended the song and was like, okay, I need to sit down with my friends. Let's watch it. And I have to read the lyrics, or my brain will like make up what I think he's saying <laughs> that sounds cooler or whatever. Um, and blind react to it, not just from a spiritual level, but also just from like a humanity level. And I think you guys are really great partners to bring in, not just because of your musical ability, but also I think your spiritual sensitivity, if that makes sense. Like we're not just listening to this with people who are like, oh, I like this instrument or I like how that sounds or whatever. But it's also like that spiritual side of when I hear this, this is what I think or this is what I feel or whatever. Um, and so I hope Amanda gets back up here soon because she's the she's the most spiritually sensitive uh, person I've ever met, but she's currently probably changing poop. So um could be worse. But hey, yeah. Um that being said, before we start, do you guys have anything you want to say? Intro yourselves a little bit or, or talk about anything you want? Yeah. Me go. Yeah, yeah. Uh me go. That's... No, you go. <laughs> <laughs> I love the Migos. I think they're great. Um uh, RIP take off. Y'all, okay, now I'm no, going to yeah, okay. Never mind. Anyway. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I guess we're just, we're lovers of Jesus and we're lovers of music. And yeah. we really love music about Jesus. <laughs> um, <Okay>. But <laughs> I think it's, um, you know, I am I am rapper. That's what I do. Uh, I right. love hip hop. Born and raised on the Prophet Pac and the Bishop Biggie. That's just what what I was raised Love on, um, but I was also <laughs> raised in Central Alabama, and so I have an extreme soft spot for country, and okay. not like not like pop country, like not a Florida Georgia line. Do no no disrespect right. to Florida Georgia line. That's not my thing. Um, but uh, because we have we we like you said we've listened to this project. Um, we both love this project. Mm-hmm. I, I'm a we're I've made i've turned olivia yeah into true. into a country fan because she used Ooh. to but used to but hate country. it's very important that it's not like the pop country right. because yeah. i'm i like country as long as like the general theme isn't beer back roads and big trucks you know right. so right. it's like anything that because the other side of country is actually very poetic and very yeah. intentional with the way that they word things and that's like a lot right. of what you get in this album is like intentionality yeah. and authenticity and yeah, poetry. It, really. Yeah, w- one of the hills, and and I think a lot of people will disagree with me, and probably most will. Uh, but one of the hills that I'm like willing to die on, probably one of my more controversial opinions, uh, hot takes. W- w- yeah, one one of my many <laughs> hot takes really is that one of the most similar genres. How do I say it? Uh, and I'm just say, I mean, you're going to say it how yeah, you want it. Yeah. I, I think, I think hip hop and, and, and true country, like the more uh, folksy, I guess, Americana mm-hmm. leaning side of country, I think it's so similar to hip hop. And so, okay. and and that's why I love it so much because I think. And there's... I have a hard time with that opinion because I'm yeah. such a like I focus like I've been producing since I was 18. Music's yeah. always just been a part of my life, and so I'm a very like music first person yeah. and then lyrics after. Yeah. And like concept after, so like sonically that like makes no sense to me at all. Yeah. <laughs> so like the. But yeah, but conceptually. But I understand and, and, after and, hearing it a yeah, million and, times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Poetically, what you, where he's coming from? Like, yeah. They're, they they share a lot of commonalities. They share a lot of birth from pain, right? Um, a, a lot of overcoming overcoming trials. So when you like really like get down to it, that's why I love both. I am a okay. I I love I love Zach Bryan and I love J Cole, and that's okay. just who I am. <laughs> okay. And then your uh your kind of like musical I background, don't. if you will. I don't have any. I am a pure consumer. I'm like I'm just here to absorb and listen and I'll give you the like raw I don't uneducated <laughs> I guess like response of I'm like oh I like that I like I'm the person that I'm like that makes me feel something and I don't know why it makes yeah. me feel that way I mean, but that's I, one of the I greatest things yeah. about music is that it's completely subjective uh as like 
every single person who listens to it will have a different feeling or an emotion yeah. that it evokes. Right. And I just think that's like one of the coolest things about music. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Like with no context and uh, the context of this album, I think is interesting and in how it pertains to y'all's podcast and like yeah. story and um, like how really our relationship started as friends too, mm-hmm. which I'll, but like even outside of that, like, just the way that music can just relate to every single person in their individual uh, problems in life or whatever mm. is just yeah. specific to every person. And I think it's just one of the most interesting things. It's about. art, baby. I love art. Just Yeah, like, exactly. I mean, it's just, it's the same thing, yeah, yeah. right? Just a different... The, the yeah. late, great Mac Miller once said, music is a beautiful thing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so right. <laughs> so yeah. right. Yeah, yeah. and, I, and so I love right. it too. Like all the different, like you're talking about like the different musical backgrounds and perspectives. And I know for me, I grew up single mom in Middle Tennessee. So we were like country music or like that clean, like I almost call it rock, but not really like three doors down, kind of like heavy, like, yeah, like it was heavy metal, but it wasn't like grunge, you know? And so we listened to that a lot. And then when I started listening to music on my own, I went in the complete opposite direction. Uh, Lil Wayne, the Carter Four, changed oh, my life. Bro. Um, Don't even Eminem, get him started. You know what I mean? Like I went down that road for a while. And then when I got saved, of course, in that in that toxic church culture, there's the immediate like anything but worship music's bad music, you know? And so having to learn that and navigate that a little bit. And then when we met, super into like, indie music like Mumford and Sons and the Lumineers and music like that and so that really challenged me on a like lyrical level of like I like like obviously I enjoy music that sounds good but I really enjoy listening to music that the lyrics like are they make me think or they Mm -hmm. challenge my mindset or like you know what I mean something like that more than just like oh this is kind of a cool beat like I can get behind this it was more of like I want to find music that that challenges me and then when you lay that into the spiritual realm as I'm sure you guys can relate, like for every one good Christian song, there's seven mediocre ones that kind of have the same theme, but they're not really. And the one song I have heard off of his album that we're about to listen to, um, the lyrics of that song like slapped me. And I was like, man. And then when when talking with you guys about it, it was like, oh, it sounds like the whole album's kind of like that. Um, and so what we wanted, the reason why we even wanted to kind of do this episode, this project one, I think it's a lot of fun. Um, but two, to really just get get all those different perspectives. You have the the musically more inclined, gifted people who hear not just musically, but like like you said, you, you were talking before we recorded about studying the context of the album and things like that. And so I think we all have a different perspective and all of us sharing our perspectives on what we're hearing. Hopefully the people listening have a relation mm-hmm. To that, so that way the next time they're listening to a new worship song that comes out, they're not just like, oh, this is new, let me get excited about it, but they're actually thinking through, like, what am I saying? And I think if there's one thing I really like about our friend Jordan, um, whenever I notice, he he doesn't do it all the time, but he, I've seen him do it a couple of times where he'll, he'll stop in the middle of a worship song and say, like, I'm singing words I don't normally say. And like, that always gets my attention back onto, like, yeah, and I and I hope I haven't listened to it yet, but I hope that this album, if it's anything like the one song, it's very raw, it's very real. Um, the 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 fluff of like Christian spirituality is kind of stripped down, which is the heart of our podcast too. And I'm kind of rambling at this point. I'll be quiet, but um, I'm just but, excited. Yeah, and I like the like funny side of it of there's some lyrics in like Christian songs that I'll be singing. And I'm like, oh, this is like really hidden. And then I like pay attention to the lyrics and it's like, God, I want the full weight of heaven to come down and shine on me. And I'm like, I don't know if you've ever read the Bible. (laughs) I'm good. (laughs) I I don't want that. So there's like, pay attention. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I think that. And then also the like, I don't know. You also talk about like the things that you're asking God for. I, I know when I listen to the one song I've listened to, I don't, I'm trying to think back to the lyrics. I don't know if he ever asked a single thing. Mm-hmm. Um, there's just that that humility before the Lord, I guess is what I'm trying to say. And I hope that when we listen to worship music, when we're singing worship songs at your church or in your car or wherever, that we maintain that spirit of humility mm-hmm. um, around what we're saying. Because I think, I'm not going to get into humility versus confidence, and that's another conversation, <laughs> but um, just having that that presence before God of like, dude, I, like I'm jacked up, um, and I just want to spend some time with you. Um, so I'm excited. 
That's all I have. Anyone mm-hmm. else anything before I start? Uh, no. The Do you want to hear the context yes. before? Uh, or yes, Okay. Because yes, I don't want to like ruin <laughs> what you're hearing or no, whatever. No. But um, no, something I thought I was reading about it this morning in an article from him just making some statements about the album, like how it came about and stuff. So um, this was three years before he released this album. Him and his wife stepped away from ministry, like from full time ministry, like, and they had been on staff at a church, at some church for uh, 19 years. Wow. wow so okay. this was their first step, not being on staff at a church and like deciding that they were going to move and start and like settle okay. down and start a family. Um, and so he said that this album was just kind of an outpouring of, um, he said, obviously, like in the church a lot of really amazing things happen, but then comes with that, there's good and bad with everything. Right. Right. And he said, like, the, this album was an outpouring of, like, God doing a lot of healing in me from the pain and some of the bad things that we experience through just being in ministry for so long. Mm -hmm. Um, And just, like, stepping outside of that. And then through, like, through just conversations with God with each other and all of that, this album just kind of poured out of him. And it yeah. wasn't hard. It was just a very natural. Yeah. He said that this was like his therapy session, this album was. Oh, that's what's, so beautiful. Yeah, which is, that's what this podcast is about, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. I, mean, yeah I was going to say relatable. That's what started this yeah. for. Yeah. So when like, I read that, I was like, <laughs> yeah. spot on. Yeah, yeah it's so good. And not to be like the lame guy that brings up the scripture, but we bring it up on almost every episode we've done so far, that... The Bible is very clear that we overcome our issues and our challenges by two things, the blood of Jesus and then the word of our testimony, which is our story. And I think so many times we're quick to tell people to pray about it and like plead the blood of Jesus over it. But sometimes they just need to hear that you've been through something similar. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, I'm already getting emotional. So yeah. um, okay. I'm a crier. Nick's going to make fun of me about it. And that's OK. <laughs> um, but I'm excited. So that being said, uh, track one and kind of what we'll do if if something is just heavy on your heart in the middle of a song, just tell me and I'll hit pause. But if not, we'll, we'll plan to just play it through. And then at the end of each song, we'll just be like, anyone got anything? And if not, we'll. I think we'll, I think we'll find ourselves interrupting the song. Okay. Yeah. Just okay. wave me down and okay. I'll try and hit the pause button as quick as I can. <laughs> and uh, we'll go from there. But that, that being said, uh, track one, here we go. And here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Here's what, I'm, here's what I'm gonna say about that. Do you remember we all? I don't. I know we all didn't like totally grow up in church. Like, maybe, well, I think maybe you might have Olivia a little bit more than the, than some of us. I don't know about you, Nick, but like, I'm not crying. I just have allergies. Do you remember like that feeling in youth group of like something crazy is about to happen? Like that first night of youth camp, or like that's like the emotion I get. And we were talking about this before we recorded when we were testing our mics of like it feels like the distractions are just stripping away. And I feel like that 15 year old kid again of mm-hmm. like, I feel like just something in my heart's about to shift. I, maybe I'm the only one cause it obviously doesn't have lyrics, but um, it reminded me of like when I do yoga, like just like that meditation, like calm. Like I think I, he did such a good job of like sonically, like creating the emotion or like the feeling of peace. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. like, I, I don't know, like, the very first time I listened to this album and this came on, I was like, okay, 
spirits in this one. Yeah. Like I can feel the like I can feel where he was, you yeah. know, whenever he like whenever I'm sorry, I'm going to get nerdy. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Um so like in the first few seconds, like it's just kind of quiet and then he just starts kind of like playing on the piano. Mm -hmm. And you can almost like see him just sitting in this room and just like start kind of like playing different things as if like he's getting like yeah. a lowdown from the spirit and he just starts feeling yeah. like, oh, I don't know. It just, that it gives me the chills. I love it. For me, it's even like, and, and it's funny, like we talk about like, maybe we won't have anything to say in between songs and then it literally has nothing. <laughs> and, then, and, then, and then here we are. Yeah. But for me, it's like, so where I grew up in, in central Alabama at a small Southern Baptist church, like for me, like I can take like, I can I can tell you a million bad things that that I experienced that I carried with me that I had to work through like yada yada yada, but like this like the mm -hmm. the sounds the yeah. that piano mm -hmm. the you know it takes me back to being in this little church in yeah. in Childersburg Alabama mm -hmm. and you you know what yeah. I mean it's like wow like but like God was there right you know yeah. like mm -hmm. there were there was still like this this the spirit of God they wouldn't have called it that. Uh, but, yeah. the, but the Holy Spirit was was well, cut I mean, that out. Uh, no. I think it, like, <laughs> the Holy Spirit strips was... out all the of the production of it, you know. And I remember with the one of the first concerts we ever went to, um, we had just been married for like three or four months, and we share in our previous episodes about kind of that season of our marriage when we were going through a really really rough time. And I thought what would help us was I got us tickets to a Hillsong concert uh, down in Mobile, and. Uh, but I, we got there and we fought the entire we fought the whole time. drive down. It was <laughs> hell on earth. Um, but we got there and I was like, God's gonna work. God's gonna work in my wife's heart and make our marriage better, you know, kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But um, I got there and they said, Hey, um, the house fires are opening for Hillsong, and I'd always been kind of like a closet house fires fan, but like I didn't want to come off like the spiritual guy, you know, so I didn't. And Pat Barrett comes out and it's exactly what you were talking about, Olivia. Pat Barrett. So someone else opened. And then it was, it wasn't actually the house. It was just Pat that night. And then Hillsong comes on next and they're like the headliner, you know? And I think Chad Veach was speaking, like it was this big thing. And this band had just come out, rock band. I forget, it wasn't Skillet, but it was one of those kind of bands. Fire, smoke, like all this stuff. And then Pat comes out and he's like, hey, the rest of the group couldn't make it. It's just me. And he grabbed his acoustic guitar and this arena's probably got seven or 8,000 people in it. And he grabbed his guitar, and then they turned off, like, where it was, like, just the light was kind of on him, you know, because there's no one else on the stage. And he didn't sing for almost 20 minutes. He just played his guitar. And I remember, like, the rest of the concert was cool. Chad's message was great and all that. But, like, I like here I am eight years later, and that's, like, the only thing I actually remember, mm, like, like, what was said or done. And he just got up there, played his guitar for 20 minutes, and he did the, like, two or three songs we all knew at the time, like Build My Life and all those. And then he left. But for 20 minutes, he just played his guitar and, like, kind of, like, did this weird, like, humming thing or whatever. I don't know. But um, that's what that reminds me of. Because, like, Pat was just, like, I feel like he does the same thing when he's alone. And this feels like you're kind of just getting a peek into a broken man's private time, you know, um, which is super relatable. So. Yeah. It's powerful, yeah. and it's just music, yeah. you yeah. know? And that's what I that's what gets me so excited yeah. about yeah. this kind yeah. of stuff, is, yeah. like, the amount of emotions that you can invoke from somebody just from a couple hits on a keyboard mm -hmm. and, yeah. and a slide guitar. And, yeah. It's and crazy. Yeah. It's so wild. And the feelings and the pictures and that you can, like, see in your mind. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know. It's yeah. so cool. It's so cool. Yeah. Anyway, I'll All stop. Right. <laughs> Next one has lyrics, right? Next one. Yeah, the next yes. one has the lyrics. Of, the yeah, yeah. Have lyrics. <laughs> yeah. Let's see what happens. They might say I'm a sinner if I don't sing hallelujah. It all be forgotten if every song I sing's not to you. But I find peace and holy ground in a little farmhouse in a no-name town where we say our prayers each night. Maybe I'm a dreamer, still get high on hoping. I might close my eyes sometimes, but I keep my hands wide open. I question every word I choose, but the answers all come back to you. I'm just trying to get it right. 
If I got asked to preach on Sunday, what would my sermon be? That you're not hard of hearing and you're tired of, I'm sorry. Forgive me for the countless ways I've tried to climb the graves. I'm singing it all different now, but the promise is the same. <laughs> I'm not ready for this. After all, I'm human, just skin and bones and pain. Still praying for a melody, pray out on these six strings. I wonder if I'm good enough and if I'll ever measure up, but I'm trying to get it right. If I got asked to preach on Sunday, what would my sermon be? You're not hard of hearing and you're tired of I'm sorry Forgive me for the countless ways I've tried to climb the grave I'm singing it all different now But the promise is the same Yeah, the promise is the same And it's right there in my children's eyes The truth my wandering tried like hell to hide If I got asked to preach on Sunday What would my sermon be? That you're not hard of hearing And you're tired of I'm sorry So forgive me for the kindness ways I've tried to climb the grave I'm singing it all different now I pray they understand somehow That the promise is the same Yeah, the promise is the same Yeah, the promise is the same just so much Ooh, yeah oh <laughs> there's just so much oh my goodness when i tell you this is one of the most like authentic and genuine christian albums i've heard yeah in a long time i just like Ooh. i feel that it's oh. it's just so real yeah it's just it's it's so obviously not commercialized yeah right yeah. Mm-hmm. you know what i mean like yeah. it's so like it probably and i'm sure you know i'm sure this they play songs from this project on like you know K Love or whatever, but it's so obviously not, like not written mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. for. Well, I think he even talks about that in the yeah. first verse. Like if I'm not singing, it's as, if yeah. I'm not uh, singing a song to you, then I'm not like yeah, yeah. I'm not in the right yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah yeah. Which I mean, you guys have talked about on your podcast, like if vocational ministry is not mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. like the the. The concept that, like, if I'm not doing vocational ministry, then I'm not doing, doing my ministry, calling yeah. or yeah. doing my ministry. Yeah, yeah. I think that's just kind of like yeah. what he was talking about in the first bit there, yeah. which I think is something a lot of people don't yeah. say very often, yeah. you know? And, and I was when I'm listening to it, the fir- there was a couple lines in there that I felt like were specifically trying to speak to that more worship vocation, like you were talking about, like, right. the whole, like, singing song like oh, I don't personally like I don't you know that I've never did that but I think what jumps out to me one of the lines that jumped out to me the most was trying to climb to mm-hmm. grace and I think so many of us do that right of like I'm going to we say that grace is free but then we live like we have to earn it mm-hmm. um instead of enjoying what we've been given um and I think there's we do that because it makes us feel like we're honoring it yeah you know, if I just walked up to you and pay and, and gave you a house for free, you're going to live in that house. But anytime you see me, you're going to feel like you owe me something. And no matter how many times I tell you, you don't owe me this, you're going to feel that. And I think that that line really speaks to me of like, dude, I've tried. Yeah. I still try all the time of like, I'm going to do this because I feel like I just have to, not because I necessarily want to, if that makes sense. And I feel like a lot of the pressure that the other side of this comes from is like the Christian's point of view of like, I'm doing all of this stuff because 
Christians are just so hard on other Christians. Yeah. Like if you're not singing this certain song, you're not in the right. If you're not preaching yeah. the sermon, you're not in the right. If you're not the fact that he said hell in there at one yeah. point, then you're not in the right. I hope that like they understand is what he says. It's like yeah. that, that it's, you're still the same. I'm, I'm still a Christian. I still love yeah. you. I didn't run away. It just looks different. Yeah. Um, and that's sometimes hard to convince people of that. And like the whole point of the song, like God's promise is mm -hmm. the same throughout. It's just yeah. like, yeah. yeah, like I see everything differently now. Mm -hmm. It has a whole new meaning to me, but the promise yeah. has been the same yeah. all along and God is unchanging. Yeah. And, and the last thing I'll say, I know with the line, the other line that jumped out to me was when he says, if I have to preach on Sunday, what mm -hmm. would I talk about? And we, I think we shared this maybe yeah, in episode did. two. I don't know um, when we recorded this now, uh, episode two hasn't come out yet, so I don't remember exactly what all we said, but the literally, the, so the name, I don't know if I've ever shared this with you guys, but the name of our podcast, the reason why we named it what we named it, when Tyler, um, our pastor, sorry, Tyler, I name dropped you, but mm -hmm. um, asked me to preach January <laughs> of whatever year that was, last year, 23. Mm -hmm. Um, my initial reaction was sure, because he's my friend and I wanted to help him. And then I, I think we kind of walked through that with you guys of like, I want to do it because I want to honor him. But like on a spiritual level, I don't know if I want to do this or not. And Amanda asked me, she said, because I was like, I don't want to do all this church stuff, like whatever. And Amanda said, if you could talk to 16-year-old Eric when he just got saved and you were his youth pastor and you could preach one message to him, what would you tell him? And I laid in bed for forever trying to figure out what I would say and deep in the Old Testament, something I hadn't read in years, the story of Elijah came to my mind of of this of the what we have referenced in episode one. And so I told Amanda, I said, I think that would be the the story or the the message I would preach to him is this text. Um, and she goes, well, then why don't we do that? Like, why don't we start that? And so literally like the whole name of our podcast, the whole core of what we do came from that literal conversation of, if you could preach one message, what would it be on? Um, now granted when I preached that Sunday, I didn't use that message. I did something totally different. Um, but that, I, when, I was going to say, I think that conversation came before Tyler ever asked you to preach because you're like, you were struggling on like how to even pick up your Bible and read it. Mm -hmm. And my challenge to you was don't, because all you've ever done your whole life was build sermons for people. Uh, you never did studying like on your own right. for you. And I was like, well then just change your mindset. What would you teach you? And that's how you're, you're going to start studying and pick up your Bible again after right. so many years of not picking it up. Yeah. Yeah. So. so that hit me. I cried, Nick. I already cried. So <laughs> uh, I'll let it slide. Okay. Let it slide. Anything else? You're ready to jump into the next one? Yeah. Okay. Let's see. I love every song on the side. Me too. Me too. Well, you know, I've said it. This world will be unkind. Say you might regret it, but don't let that change your mind. And you can't separate it, the darkness from the light. I once called it complicated, now I call it light. So fail. Come to the top Smile and give it all you got Both good and bad, happy, sad Everything belongs The highs and lows, the wise man knows Heartbreak writes the songs Go ahead and feel the pain And know it's all okay just remember life rolls on and everything belongs The jockey lives for racing The horse just loves to run The young man wins for praising The old man plays Everything belongs 
the highs and lows, the wise man knows Heartbreak writes the songs, go ahead and feel the pain And know it's all okay and Just remember life rolls on, and everything belongs Cause I can't celebrate your good So fill your cup to the top Smile and give it all you got All you got It's both good and bad Happy, sad, everything belongs The highs and lows, the wise man knows Heartbreak writes the song Just remember life rolls on Don't be afraid of moving on Cause everything belongs Everything belongs Reminds me, like, okay, all right. First of all, on um, just like a poetry lyric writing oh, level, like, just I mean, just like top tier stuff. Like, the jockey lives for racing, the horse just loves to run. Oh, yeah, the young man plays for winning, uh, uh the old man plays for fun, wins for praising, or wins for praising, yeah. the old man plays yeah. for fun. Like, yeah, that bro, whole second verse is just like, that's wild. yeah, and then and. Man. Yeah, and when you tie that in with the you know the, the the concept of like everything, like neither is neither is right or wrong, right? Mm -hmm. Like ne both are, yeah, a part of a part of life and a yeah. part of growing. And and immediately in the first few songs, you're already seeing like a theme of, I have spent my life working to earn God's love. Yes. Yeah, and yes. that is I'm realizing now through life and through the good and yeah. the bad that is so unnecessary to live that way right <laughs> well, yeah. and it's and it's just like we were talking about like we were you know earlier when we were sitting down having breakfast together we were talking about just uh, like sometimes there isn't a right decision right like sometimes when it's like okay what is my calling what am i supposed to do right now sometimes got and you talked about mm -hmm. it in in the in the first podcast amanda sometimes god just like you know, you're holding his hand, and sometimes it's like, okay, yeah, like it's your turn, make a decision. Yeah, I'm with you. Yeah, like I'm there, right? You no, know, good or bad, right? Right or wrong, yeah. like I'm with you. I'm there. Yeah. It's good. It's good stuff, man. I know what came to my mind was I always hated the phrase "everything happens for a reason." Like those, like corny, and like it always pissed me off because, like, I don't know, it just seemed like such a cop out to real ministry. And I feel like I don't know, my brain jumped to like this is a more beautiful way of saying that same message and it because it's not like oh the bad things happen for a reason but it's like you can't have what does he say i can't hang out with you on your good days and then not be with you on your bad and i did when i heard that <laughs> Bar. at first i thought about like what kind of a friend am i to others you know but then i also thought about like god's not just there for me on my good days you know um he just wants to hang out with me um, and I also, I can't praise him when everything's going good. And then when it gets bad, I run away or yeah. vice versa. You know, I only need God on my hard days, but when things are okay, yeah. I don't need him anymore. You got to have them in both. Yeah. And well, I already name dropped him. So I'll say it again, but I think even though we don't always see eye to eye and we don't always agree on everything or whatever, um, 
one of the things I feel like our pastor has taught me in the time that I've known him is how to how to live this out more practically. If there's one thing I love about Tyler Sturban, it's he does like he just rolls with it. You know, no matter how bad today is, tomorrow's like every morning's a fresh morning. And he's he's really been teaching me that just through his example of like, I don't know, just that grace every day of like I could yell and cuss at him today. And if my daughter got sick tomorrow, he would still take her in. You know what I mean? Like there's no at least I would like to think so. I, I you know, I don't you never know until something happens, but um I, maybe you should just cuss him out just to see. No, I'm just <laughs> but no, just that that embodiment of everything. Like, hey, bro, this is just part of like. I remember when your parents passed. Mm-hmm. That was one of the things he said was like, I could like he said sorry and prayed for us, but he was also like, bro. I remember he was the first person who said like, hey, it's better than the other way around. Mm-hmm. You know, better you bury your parents than your parents bury you. You know, mm-hmm. and we didn't even have kids yet, so I was like, well, I don't know about that, but like having Joe now changes that. So like just having that perspective of like it's just part of it bro like we just got you probably did it earlier than you wanted to yeah. and then the last line right here is what the other one I want to talk about where he said don't be afraid of moving on yeah I think about that and I'll let you speak to it but I think about your parents a lot yeah and that tension of like how do I move I feel like when in my brain moving on equals forgetting mm-hmm. how do I move on but not forget you because I don't want to leave yeah. you I love you too much to leave you here yeah how do I move into this new thing I yeah. Kind of want you to. No, and I I still struggle with that a lot because when you do move on, you do feel like you're you're forgetting in a way and you'll feel guilt for that. Um but I try to remind myself of like they don't want me to just sit in sorrow of them passing like it it's it happened, you yeah. know. Um and like Joe has made it a lot easier, I would say, because life does move on. Um, New life was brought into the world. I have that positivity to, like, look forward to. But also, like, they're kind of passed on through her. Mm -hmm. You know, like, I have a piece of my parents, and now Joe is a piece of that. So, like, it's just the cycle of life. Of And I I try to remember them. I try to remember the, the good qualities. But... Also, I can't just sit down and for the rest of my life just be sad that they're not here anymore yeah. because they don't want that. Yeah. They they would feel their death was in vain at that point. Yeah. Not that it was on purpose, but yeah, that them being gone was, you know, just this hindrance to my life. Yeah. And I don't want them to feel yeah. that way. Um, I want them to feel like I just took it and I grew from it and yeah. I did the best that I could with what they gave me in the time that they, they had here um, and try to spin it as positively as possible. Yeah. Now, I will say there was a time that people tried to make me move on a little too fast. Right. right. <laughs> and that was very frustrating. Um, but yeah, my time of grieving is over now yeah. and I just want to use said, it. he said, he specifically says like, just don't be afraid of it. Yeah. Not that you, and I think that's such a polite way of being yeah. like, Hey, whenever you're ready, like, yeah. I think God's ready, you know? Yeah. Um, and we talk about our parents, but I know like we all have a common yeah. underlying story about maybe our experience in ministry or with the church. And I know for us, there was that fear of like, well, what is next? And mm-hmm. I think especially you were sharing earlier, the context of his story, right? Like. I'm sure there was a fear. And Mm -hmm. like, if this is all I've ever known and you're pretty freaking successful at it, you know, um, to be willing to walk away from that. Like you're not just walking away from a calling, if you will, you're walking away from income and security and friends and family. So like, yeah, I think the fear of moving on will keep us still more than anything else, you know? And uh, sometimes I even wonder like, what is more difficult of like, yeah, obviously losing my parents was hard, but what's more difficult of like, they didn't choose to go. They just, you know, they were taken from me. But when you choose to leave friends and family like that and who are your whole world, like it's a decision. Like that's also heartbreaking because you have the power or they had the power to leave. And um, that can be just as heartbreaking, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? Anybody? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Soaking in. Oh. Man, I honestly, like, it's been maybe a couple weeks. I've been listening to these songs, like, here and there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. But I haven't just straight up listened through this album, and I forgot. Yeah. <laughs> I, like, well, I, like, already time, forgot how good it, it was. It's funny. It's funny. So, the, the first time we listened through this album, we were on our way down to, like, visit my family or something. I don't mm-hmm. remember. It might have 
I don't remember when it came out. Well, I had listened to it, and I was like, Nate. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was already... like, you don't even know. Like, and this so, is, you're going to love this album. So, which is, that's what that's what we do on Car Rides. It's like, let's find a this project. This is like the basis of our entire relationship, yeah, yeah. is picking that's... apart albums. So. And it, and it's, <laughs> that's so cool. Though. Yeah, oh, that's all we do. <laughs> and I don't know, cause, so we were going down to Alabama, and we were listening to it. And I think I was like, like in tears, like, and I think you were driving at the time. Mm-hmm. When we're doing it, and I'm just like sitting there in the passenger seat, like. Well, there's like, something you know, like, like, there's something so grounding and so um, affirming about someone just being this honest, you yeah, know, yeah. and like, like just hearing someone say, "Hey, like everything that you're going through is mm-hmm. normal. Like right. this is this is just life, and yeah. we're all going through the ups and downs. Yeah, like it's almost like permission to feel all the feelings. Oh my gosh. To yeah." Like, you know, experience everything that you need to experience. Cause I feel like a lot of times, like we feel like we can't. So Mm -hmm. somebody just coming around and being like, no, go ahead, go ahead. Feel that. Like you're Mm -hmm. supposed to feel that, you know, like I think he even says at one point, I can't remember if it was this song or the last one about like his songs come from heartbreak. Like our stories come from heartbreak. heartbreak. Wise man. Yeah. Wise man says that uh, heartbreak, right. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. We just butchered (laughs) that. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, it's like, please don't leave me hanging. We're on camera. <laughs> We're on camera. Oh, Heartbreak man. writes the song. Yeah. And that so will forever be true. Yeah. yeah. Bro, we've we've literally talked about like how much harder writing music got once we got married. Really? <laughs> because we weren't mm-hmm. like Because we weren't going through <laughs> yeah. like relationships yeah. and like before I started dating Olivia, I went through a breakup. Uh we dated for a long time. Me and Olivia sat in a studio for a little bit and had a holy pee done. Yeah. Like holy, the holy next week, yeah, so, yeah. Like probably will never so see the light of day. It, it will yeah. never see so the light of day. So don't get your hopes up. <laughs> we'll never come out for yeah. all of my three fans out there. Got <laughs> <laughs> luck. <laughs> it's just so good. We yeah. can keep going. Yeah, I just we can wanted go. to say that. Next one. Here we go. Let's see. I just one, like you one. said, the permission to like feel is. All right. Here we go. Let's see. Let's. Beautiful mind. There's magic still behind those sunken eyes You're not the sum of all your thoughts inside Still a song within the ashes of your life Beautiful mind Daddy always said you'd be a star The things you do don't make you who you are It's easy to fall when the bar is set too high You're broken Anyone who says they're not Sorry, you were so misunderstood. <laughs> Beautiful mind, God knows you've been holding on so tight. Sure, you've got a million reasons why. But don't be scared to let things fall. Cuts don't heal without a scar Cause you're broken Anyone who says they're not is lying Maybe we all got too good at hiding You never did the things they said you should I'm sorry you were so misunderstood
crazy like every single song is like that. <laughs> that like one. this next one one of my favorite ones on the album anyway we're on this one right now though <laughs> oh man i feel like that one i feel like Woo. someone emailed Corey my story mm-hmm. and see like i i think you need to go back obviously not now but go listen to that song and then one day in the future you guys go listen to that song as a parent and that that's what got me emotional is like i wish i just hope that i do a good job that joe feels this way as she grows up you know like that yes we're all screwed up but it's okay you know like people are gonna say you're gonna do certain things it's okay if you don't you know like i just hope she feels the grace and the purpose of her life and like the way that he describes it in that you know yeah i i I can't speak for like you know in the context of this room it's it's easy to for me to listen to that song through our shared experiences yeah and Mm -hmm. and you know with you know deconstruction Mm -hmm. and i know this is a christian podcast and that word scares (laughs) scares christians but that's something we talk about a lot you know Mm -hmm. is you know the process of deconstructing and reconstructing and and uh you know, it's almost like it, and i think you said it earlier this album is like a therapy session mm-hmm. and i and, and it was for Corey writing this obviously um but even like as as a listener it's the things that that you in, wish the, in, in the church world, yeah. yeah, in the ministry world, it's like it's the things that we all want to say and nobody says. Yeah, mm-hmm. we we don't talk about it. We don't talk about, you know, we suck it up. So Sunday goes good. So yeah. so Wednesday night youth service goes good. Yeah. So like we we oftentimes and and you know I'm sure there's a lot of I'm sure there's a lot of people in ministry right now that you know can take these things and. And it's like, hey, like it's okay to, like you were saying earlier, to feel those pains, mm-hmm. process yeah. those mm-hmm. emotions. Yeah. Well, and I think too about like, I know I don't, I've, I haven't lived y'all's story. I've only lived ours. I know a big frustration, not just in the spiritual world, but like in general, it pisses me off. But is when I know that I'm telling the truth about something and I'm not believed. And in particular, if it's something that I don't have an ability to prove, uh, me and Evan were just talking about this at dinner last night about how, like, I can say, you know, that makes me mad. And someone go, well, no, it doesn't. And I'm like, I know that's maybe a bad example, but like, I can't, I can't prove you my emotional state. And so if I say emotionally, this is where I'm at emotionally, or this is where I'm at spiritually. And then you say that that's not true. It really ups- it doesn't just make me mad, like it upsets me. And I think when I hear this song, I like even this last line right here about I feel like he's almost just talking to me specifically about like like I was hurting and I was told that I wasn't mm-hmm. or that I shouldn't be, you know? And I feel like he's just saying, like, I'm sorry, bro, that no one believed you, you know. Um, cause I would imagine even in his role, there was times where he was struggling and everyone was like, how could you struggle? You, you've got all the money, you've got the job, like you've got the, whatever you've got the albums. You've, you can't how write you reckless work? love and struggle. Yeah. Like, <laughs> and it's like, I feel like he goes home and it's different, you know? And so I don't know when I hear that, I just feel like almost just like, for, and I don't want to say forgiveness. Cause I feel like God's like, I've already feel forgiven by God, but almost just like, I don't know. I don't feel alone in that anymore. Yeah. You know, like someone else on this grand of a scale felt the same way. And he's just saying like, look, you, you felt this way. And anyone who tells you differently, like, you know how many times I was called a liar Mm -hmm. because I struggled with my faith. And he's like, 
they're they're lying, not mm-hmm. you. You know, like I don't know. It just made me feel like like that male voice in my life for once was actually on my side. Yeah. Um, and that's huge uh, for me. I feel like sometimes we put that pressure on ourselves. Shouldn't be feeling yeah. this way. Like, look at the yeah. life around you. Yeah. Like, why? And, like, we misunderstand ourselves yeah. in, like, yeah. that kind yeah. of sense. You yeah. Know? And so it's just nice to, like, once again, it's just so, it's giving you permission yeah. to, like, yeah. feel these things and be like, this is, this is normal. Yeah. Like, I just feel like it's so easy for us to, like, hold up and be like, I'm the only one going yeah. through this yeah. and no one else understands. And then to hear someone just be so honest about where they are yeah. is yeah. the just, point of art and music. Yeah. And, and I, I truly don't think these type of, conversations have been talked about in the christian Mm -mm. music space ever yeah like i i Mm -mm. at least i can't come up off the top of my head a project or a song that really dives into these you might get like a line like here and there in certain songs but but this is like this is it's it's in depth it's yeah yeah. well i like to maybe like isn't the right word but i enjoy the fact that we haven't so far, we haven't really asked for anything from God, but also we haven't really said anything. I, I It almost feels like some songs, it's the perspective of us talking to him. And then like this, sometimes I also get the vibe of like, this is God talking to me. Mm-hmm. And I think that so many times we go to church, we go to worship events, and it's so heavy about, God, here's everything I have to say. Here's all that I think you are. And we don't ever, we give ourselves time to like hear from God whatever that looks like. And sometimes I think hearing from God can come through an avenue like this of like, I've had so many pastors tell me they were sorry for what I went through Mm -hmm. and none of them have gotten through like that song just did for me. You know what I mean? So like, I think it's okay as artists and like, as you guys write your music, like it doesn't always have to be so focused on like, God, here I am. And here's what I think of you of praise or worship or Thanksgiving or, or pleading, asking you. And then we say, God speak to us. Now everybody take your seats so that the pastor can come get on stage. But it's like, no, I think if God wanted to say something, this is what he would want to say. And that felt very relieving. Yeah. We're broken, and anyone who says they're not is lying. Yeah. Like We've all got really good at hiding. Yeah. And I think that's part of, like, let's be honest, how many, and I, I'm not saying this about our church, but how many leadership meetings have we been in, and all it is is glorified coaching on how to hide it, mm. you know? Um and we can we call it leadership development yeah. or growing personally, and it's like no, you're just teaching me how to not I, show it. I want it's like what goes back into my mind of like an example of that is right after mom and dad died. Like I, everybody gave me like the six week, two month mark, and they're like, she's grieving, she needs her time. After that, they're like, okay, it's been two months. Like, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and I literally, I I think it was three or four months after that, I had uh, a person in leadership come up to me and say, you are acting too sad. We need you to put a smile on your face and get back to work out there. Those weren't the words verbatim, but I remember put put a smile on your face or put your church face on because we need you out there. The joy of the Lord is your strength, and if you're not acting joyful, how will they know to find joy? Yeah. And it's like... And I just remember being like, but I'm going to relate to somebody who's struggling right now more than you ever will with your church yeah. face. I was like, so no, I'm not going to go out there and fake it. And I think I about checked out at that point. I was yeah. like, I just, I can't do mm-hmm. this. I can't. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm sorry I didn't meet your your timeline. Yeah. Um, yeah. But. But you'll have to deal with it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. All right. I feel good. Y'all ready? Let's do, let's see what this next one is. <laughs> Maybe my favorite written song on the I knew he loved his whiskey. I knew he loved his wine. But I was never quite sure if he loved me. And I always wondered why I didn't want his money. The Lord knows he didn't have much. This guitar he gave me was his, I believe in you, son I didn't get forgiveness for the smallest of things But I got who he was and who I didn't want to be 
God, I'm thankful for the beauty in the mess I wouldn't be the man I am today, I guess That's my inheritance There ain't much or nothing that I didn't try Looking for love in every wrong place Didn't make it right I hurt a lot of people Just hurt people hurt And saying sorry when you're not sorry Man, it never works I didn't get forgiveness For the smallest of things But I got who he was And who I didn't want to be Jesus didn't know what else to do Showed me his hands and he said Son, I did this for you And you'll be a daddy Like you never knew Cause I take broken things And make them new And I got forgiveness For the smallest of things Saw beauty in this mess It made me the man I am today I guess That's my inheritance That's my inheritance Well, Nick your favorite all right i just want to say this right now and i'm going to look right at the camera as i say this Corey asbury if you're watching this at any point in time hit me up i have at least three to four almost completely written country songs i'm a rapper i can't do it let's talk <laughs> so okay there's my self-promotion oh, um i a just plug <laughs> Let me, I'm plugging myself mid podcast. Mid podcast <laughs> at Nico dot raps. Oh my gosh! I think. Shut up. I think. Um, uh, <laughs> oh my lord! No, um, I don't know, man. I just think I just think it's beautifully yeah, written. It you know yeah. the dichotomy. You know, and I think we we can all sit here. Like I love my dad. Um, yeah, uh, I have a great father, and I had a dad that had me young too. So like. My dad was growing up when I was growing up, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? My parents my parents had me young. Um and so but just just that dichotomy of like, you know, here here's all the things, you know, I don't want to be mm-hmm. when, yeah. you know, because regardless, you know, you can have the best parents in the world and they still screwed up yeah. somewhere. You know what I mean? Like none of us have perfect parents yeah. and then and then And they went through struggles that we may never go through. We'll never know. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And yeah. and I think that's part of what's so relatable is like we all, we could all go around and talk about our relationship with our dads. I think that's kind of the the perspective of the song, right? But I would like for you to touch on it though because yeah. I feel like this is pretty Yeah, so that's what I was getting yeah. into is like my me and my dad uh, my parents split when I was really young. Uh, I think I was maybe maybe two years old at the oldest. My parents got a divorce. Um, but my dad, it's so funny because he, I'll never say he was a bad dad. Mm-hmm. And I'll never say that he was like the perfect dad, right? I don't think any of us have either or. But what I, what I always, as I now, I, obviously Joe's 11 months old. Um, I think when I look back over the life of me and my dad's relationship, very similar to what you said, my parents had us very young. And I think that my dad just didn't know 
Like he didn't, he wasn't close with his dad or anything like that. Uh, dad, I'm not trying to air out our family laundry yeah. here. Um, but, um, and so I think for my dad, he kind of did just what he could and he kind of was just figuring it out as he went. And so, but like he talks at the beginning, my dad is when we talk about like an inheritance, like on a, on a physical level, like he's, they're not well off. They don't have all the stuff. Um, and then he didn't have a ton of like, fatherly like life experiences to like pass now he did that like i said i think he did the best with what he had um and i think he did i think he did a a good job i also have a stepdad Mm -hmm. uh who is kind of in the same boat for different reasons he's a little bit older and that kind of thing so he had a little bit more life experiences but all that being said i just i really enjoyed listening to that about like i don't know it kind of ties in that song he said earlier about like the good and the bad. I think that as much stuff as my parents try to teach me about what to do, I also learned a lot of not necessarily what not to do, but the things that they did as parents that affected me as a kid, I can now take those in with Joe. So it's not like, I don't want to sit here and be like, thank you for missing sporting events or like not being around as often. But also like, I do thank you that you showed me, what's actually important. Cause like, I remember my dad, my dad didn't even finish high school. So for my dad, the biggest thing was be educated. You don't have to go to college, but like you have to be educated, you know? Um, and so that was his, like, he's not going to leave me a lot of money when he passes, but being raised by a single mom for a long time and him, Nick, you'll probably relate to this too. Like the idea of working a 70 hour work week was just like, that's what we do, you know, like there wasn't, that didn't intimidate me. That didn't run me off. And so I think my inheritance from them was work ethic, you know, um, you were not going to be a lazy family. We're not going to be families that mooch off of other people. Um, and so, but then we go kind of to your family on the other side, there wasn't like Mm -hmm. both your parents are gone. There was an inheritance left behind Mm -hmm. and we get grief all the time about like, I've literally had people tell us that we're lucky. Yeah. That we, yeah. we've got her lucky her that her you her don't have in laws, yeah. that you don't I'm have like, your parents anymore. And, like, I give you, I'll give you, you know, whatever. Let's say I'll give you a million dollars, but you're literally this afternoon, you're gonna have a phone call with your mom, and it's gonna be the last time you ever talk to her. But I'll give you half a million dollars. Mm-hmm. You would say like, no, yeah. and like we literally, we literally went to bed and woke up the next morning, and mm-hmm. she was gone. Yeah, but I, I'm not lucky, you know. Yeah. Um, or the fact that people will always say that. The only reason we have anything that we have in our life is because my parents just did it all for me yeah. um, after they passed. And I'm like, I, they, it, if you look at it, there were certain things that came out of it that were a blessing. But was it this like crazy, like, I, I have the house, I have the car, I have this because of yeah. all of this? Like, no, that's not, that's not how it went. And like Eric said, I would, in a heartbeat, I would sell it all in a minute, you know, to, to just see them again. But I also think like going back to your family, like I think time and even my family, yeah, time is important. Yeah. Um, I will. And that's yeah. why Eric's decided to, you know, we decided that Eric would get, was going to be home more often. Say don't dad, baby. Was time is most important and most valuable um and we want her to see that that we chose time above everything else yeah we i mean i think her parents both barely made it to 50 Mm -hmm. and so with that i've got 20 years left 22 years left like joe's barely gonna be out of high school Mm -hmm. i'm not gonna like you just don't know you know and i want joe to see those things um that are important to us um and then I mean, that's really all I can, all I've got as far as, I mean, I like this song. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just a well written, yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah. Once again, you know, all of them have this beautiful message. Yeah. It's a well written song. Mm-hmm. Well, I like too the, the lyric shift of the, at the beginning, it was my dad to me and then it was God to me. I really like it, really got my attention of like, oh snap, like I do have more. And that's the other thing. And, and we can talk about this with our parents too if we want, but like, my parents weren't saved to teenagers. Like we had Joe at 25 or Mm -hmm. 26, but we had been pastors for seven years already. So like her, even her early years are so much different than ours of like, I can sit here and talk about what my parents did or didn't teach me or did or didn't give me. But it's also like, I have a leg up on them Mm -hmm. because they didn't have an active relationship with Jesus when they had me. 
and I do with my daughter. So like, how do I capitalize on that instead of just talking about yeah. what I don't have? Let me work with what I've got. Yeah. Um, and that 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 line in there, I I just look, I ran like hell to Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's just like, well, and because that's like what it is, mm-hmm. and you know, we we don't have kids yet. I I pray that when the day comes where we have kids, that I'm the best damn dad that this world's ever seen, yeah. right? <laughs> Um, but I won't, mm-hmm. right? Like, yeah. you know, like I'm going to screw up. Yeah. Like yeah. you're going to screw up. Yeah. And that's terrifying. Yeah. You know, that, that <laughs> yeah. makes you like, yeah. but. Well, soon and soon and very soon, we hope, me and Amanda are ready for you guys to start having, start having kids. Whenever you're ready. Twins, triplets. Hey, Eric just needs to be quiet. Whenever you're ready. Whenever the oh, time. Yeah, Thank you. I plead, I plead Thank the, you. <laughs> Thank you, Amanda. Blood of Jesus. Whenever you're ready. Um, fall of this uh, this year would be dope, but whenever we you're ready. we were married <laughs> for six and a half years yeah. before we yeah, ever. Yeah, bro. Okay, okay, you're right. We're we're only you're at right. four. Okay, yeah. You're right, guys. I'm sorry. Okay, so two and a half years, you can have a kid, and then it'll be cool. Uh, I don't know, maybe sooner than that. Actually, now that we're talking about it, <laughs> Olivia's <laughs> like next song. <laughs> Roll the next song, please. <laughs> oh man, on this one for a minute. <laughs> okay, all right. Let's keep going. All right, all right let's do it. Next one. I. Okay, I won't preface. Speaking the song. of family, yeah, I was gonna say I won't preface the song, but we right into it. Yep. <laughs> oh no, I don't feel like this is gonna be good. Amanda's for me. Uh, no, probably not. This is a good one. Yeah. Amanda's about to lose it, y'all. Hospital home was a four-minute drive The baby on board made it 35 We didn't sleep awake that night Just laid by that crib singing nursery rhymes And these are the days that we'll Kindergarten drop off line. His first day at school didn't even cry. And that was when we knew that life it had a funny way of just passing us by. And these are the days that we'll want back. Tell them bedtime stories, give them a kiss, good night. Darling, before we know it, this old house will be quiet. I know we're tired right now, someday <laughs> we'll laugh about it. Let's slow it down and raise a glass, cause these are the days that we'll want. Took us a day to build that bike Felt like we only got a minute to watch him ride Juggling dinner, school, and practice times Just trying to make it through to that glass of cheap wine And these are the days that we'll want back We'll want Tell them bedtime stories, give them a kiss, good night. Darling, before we know it, this old house will be quiet. I know we're tired right now, someday we'll laugh about it. Let's slow it down and raise a glass, cause these are the days that we'll All of the countless crazy sleepless nights All of the first and the last and the tears that we cried All of the how does this work dad and mom tell me why Sometimes growing up feels like goodbye
There was a time when we were your world But now you're moving on to marry your girl So buy your house and call it home And give her a life and some kids of her own Tell them bedtime stories, give them a kiss goodnight Just before you know it, that old house will be quiet I know you're wild right now, someday we'll laugh about it Let's raise a glass and toast to that Cause we'll always be your mom and dad yeah. These are the days that we'll want back. I can honestly. We'll want them back, we'll want them back. <laughs> Dude, I just like. I'm a little old. Yeah. That's what we were I've, I've, I remember now, I've heard that one line or like kind of the beat on Instagram, like reels, you know? Mm -hmm. But I always just like. Oh, mom, some mom posting about her kid. Yeah. And I swipe on. Um, but I feel like, obviously, that's written from a parent. Yeah. But I do think, not just as a parent, because we'll talk about that in a second. I think, like, it not only obviously makes me think of Joe, right? Our daughter. But even outside of thinking of our daughter, it also makes me think about, like, wanting to be a kid again. Oh, yeah. I you was, know. I mean, like, and I was thinking about that, too. Like, like from y'all's perspective, like, how different that song, like, comes across, mm -hmm. you know, like, having a kid of your own. But for me, like, when I hear that, I think about all of the intentional things my parents did do in my childhood yeah. and, like, the effort and the work that they put in. Yeah. And the reason that I have good childhood memories is because of yeah. their decisions to do these things, yeah. you know? Yeah, and I think it's cool that he put that right after the last one because it can sometimes be like oh yeah i thought about what that my too. parents didn't do but then yeah. also like i don't know i think about like just i don't know it just feel you can't ever think of like this is the last time i did something mm -hmm. but there was a last time that you did yeah you know even though even if your parents are still on the earth like there was a last time you just went and crawled up in your dad's lap and watched tv yeah you know there was a last time you guys had family dinner around the table before yeah. you moved out because we all live on our own now like things like that and so i think all the time about like i can remember being especially being a teenager and like all i want is to move out and get away from these people and like be on my own like they're holding me back like i'm gonna do all these things and then now like when i hear that uh, before we talk about like our daughter i hear that and i think about like Mm -hmm. man i kind of just want to be especially when we talk about everything we've been talking about the hurt and the struggles and the things that come with like i wanted this life i got it and now i just kind of honestly want to go be like a 10 year old playing in the backyard when that was my only care was like who was i gonna play games with you know we, i think we were talking about it when that that snowstorm just hit we were we were driving back and there's kids like sledding down yeah. by yeah. by like mm -hmm. The high school over there is a big hill, mm -hmm. and they were sliding down. I was like, "Man, to be to be a kid again." And we're yeah. stressed about whether or not we're having service. Yeah, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and what songs we're gonna do, or what? Who's gonna work kids ministry? And yeah. all they know is a couple of days out of school. Yeah. And they yeah. they grab some trash can lids, and they're sledding down the hill. You know. Yeah. yeah. Am I gonna be able to get to work? Am I gonna get yeah. paid, even though I'm not able to go to work? Like, yeah. And like, yeah, yeah. Instead of just and they're just like snow day. Yeah. It's just <laughs> like this electric bill is about to be insane. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Um, so, no. And then I think, obviously, as a parent, that's pretty emotional, you yeah. know? Um, but I think there's a lot of truths, too, about, like, I don't know, the the line that hit me the most was, it's just a series of saying goodbyes. Yeah. Because it does. Like, the older your kid gets, like, for everything that Joe learns, I'm proud of her for learning it. But also, like, yes. now she's, that's one less thing she needs me for, yeah. you know? Um, and so that can be... It's like a mixed bag of like, I'm excited, but I'm also heartbroken. And I think sometimes God gets that way with us, though, of like, I landed the job, so now I don't ask you for provision anymore. And so God's like, I'm proud of you that you got the position you wanted, but also like, like you guys, you make a you make an album, it takes off, you make a million dollars on it. Like, I think you guys will still be good people, but you, then you think, 
from the perspective of God, like if I won a million dollars, I probably wouldn't pray about my finances as much. Or I'd thank him when the check hit the account, but six months later when I'm just used to it being there. You know what I mean? Like I think that sometimes God's that way with us of like he's going through a series of goodbyes from us of like, yeah, thanks for the kid, you know, thanks for the job, thanks for whatever. Yeah. Next, <clears throat> you know. Yeah. I don't know how y'all do it. I don't know. You know, we were talking about this earlier, us having a kid. I don't know that I can handle it. Um, it's a lot of emotions. Well, I Well, I think about like, bro, one of my favorite things, I'm in kids ministry tomorrow, bro. And I love, like, I <laughs> yeah. love that. Like, mm-hmm. I love, I love hanging out with the kids. I love kids calling me Uncle Nick. You know, I love yeah. all of that. I, you know, I thrive in that. But. I have my own, and I don't know. I don't know. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. like I'll get yeah. sappy about them. I don't can't even imagine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, I, and I never used to be sappy about any of it. Like, yeah. it, was just, it was just like whatever. And then I had Joe, and it just it changes. It changes everything. Yeah. And like, I mean, obviously, it's talking about like how fast time goes by, and like I just remember having Joe, and I was like, you hear it all the time, of like you know, just hang on to these moments because they fly by, you know? And I was like, okay, I'm going to be very intentional about, like, I'm going to savor every moment, and it's still not enough. Like, I'm so intentional about every moment that I have with her and probably to the point that I'm making her a little brat. (laughs) And But, like, it's still, like, it's still not enough. I'm still looking back and being like, it still went by too Too fast, fast. you know? Like, I stay home with her most of the time, and I even try to be grateful even on the really fussy days of, like, you know, I, I'm going to miss this. Or, like, when my house is a wreck because there's toys all over the place, I'm going to miss when these toys aren't on the floor anymore. Yeah. You know, like, I try to remind myself of that, and it it still doesn't matter. <laughs> it's still, yeah. It still just goes by way too fast, and yeah. you still just go missing it. The only thing that I will say is, like, maybe I don't miss is the newborn stage. <laughs> <laughs> the newborn stage is brutal, man. There's so I love much how, giving and so little receiving. I love how little she was, but especially with Joe, she had such a hard time this first couple months. Like I didn't even really get to enjoy. Yeah. She wasn't enjoying it. Um, yeah, she, was <laughs> she wasn't enjoying um, being alive. alive. Yeah. So. No, I, I think she's uh, talking about like, uh, uh, like trying to soak in those moments. Mm-hmm. You know, I think about. Uh, it, maybe I'm the loser in the room right now, but we were all there and this isn't to bash where we're at now or anything like that. I sometimes wish that I would have enjoyed the earlier months and years of our church more. Mm-hmm. Obviously you don't ever know what it's going to grow and turn into. Um, but I remember like there were times where I would complain about like having to drive to Gallatin, you know, um, you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, me and Amanda like, talk all the time about how literally neither of us wanted to be there at all. Yeah, yeah. we, we like, dragged both of them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so when I hear, like, you could put any big moment in your life or, like, something that you miss, and you're just like, man, I really wish I would have enjoyed that. And so, like, that applies to now whenever I try. I'm not very good at it. But whenever I'm going through, like, really tough s- seasons in life, I always try and remind myself of, like, there's going to be a day where you might want, like, this might not be that bad. Um, and then the last thing I'll say, it kind of makes me want to call my mom. Yeah. You know, one, to just apologize for being a jerk. <laughs> yeah. But two, like, I was the youngest of all yeah. of us. So, like, when I, I was the last one to move out. So, when I moved out, I was so, like, oh, man, I got my own place. Like, I'm going to do my own thing. We're married. We're going to, yeah. like, start doing all this stuff. It didn't even, it was like I shut, I remember, like, loading up the van or the U-Haul after church on Sunday. And we moved into my house Sunday night. And, like, once we got everything in, I was like, all right. Like, mm-hmm. I got my Xbox hooked up. See you later, Mom. Mm-hmm. You know, like, kind of thing. And, like, I don't know. She just went home to an empty. For the first time in 20 years, she went home to an empty house. So it's like, yeah. I kind of just want to call her and, like, yeah. go give her a hug and be like, I'm sorry. You know, that I just, like, That's... 20 years you poured out your life for me. And then in one afternoon, I just said, thanks. Yeah. Appreciate it. I literally, literally this week. I was on the phone with my mom because some family some family arguments, right? Mm-hmm. And and my response is, "F them, I don't care." Yeah. It, it, like literally, like that was verbatim. Was like, <laughs> I don't like, I don't care. And she's like, you know, this is this is my life, yeah. right? Yeah. She was like, to you, like you've got friends, you've mm-hmm. got like 
Yeah. This is what I care about, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I was like, oof, like, you don't think about it that way, right? right. You're right. thinking like, mm-hmm. I have my wife, I have my friends. Mm-hmm. I'm good, yeah. I, yeah, I'm good, like, I'll see you on Christmas, I'll see you, like, because, yeah. you know, of course, my family's seven, seven, I don't know, seven hours away, six hours away, something like that, yeah. so it's like, we don't see each other all the time, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and then when, you know, sorry, mom and dad, if you see this, uh, when, like, if they're coming into town or something, or Olivia's parents live an hour away, sorry, buddy and Carrie, if you see this, <laughs> like, we're like, oh, damn, like, <laughs> got it, we got it, that we got to do, true that is not, time. not true all the time, all the time. <laughs> but there are yeah. times. Yeah, where you're like, I really want to go get together with these people, but also they're so far away. Yeah. 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 I'll just call no, them. that's really, yeah. yeah. That's and then, more of the thing. Is, or it's the get that. It's more of like, I got to get the house cleaned. I gotta yeah, I got to check dinner, all these things gotta, off the list. <laughs> yeah. right? And they're like, we just want to see our kids, yeah. right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Anytime, <laughs> you know. Doesn't matter uh, what your house looks like. My, like. <laughs> my father-in-law is probably the the sappiest man I know. His his running joke is that he, he cries at Kmart closings. And it, it's like kind of true, um, <laughs> but he's he's such a he's such a sweet, caring man, yeah. and uh, it's funny like whenever like all the kids will get together like you know her sister you know our our nieces like we're all together like he's he's gonna cry right mm-hmm. and it's like okay buddy you're being sappy and then when you think about it through like a lens like this yeah. it's like this is like this is his legacy yeah. you yeah. know mm-hmm. this this is what when the day comes and you know his parents are having, you know, some, you know, health issues now, like, you know. and so, yeah. yeah, so he's looking at, like, this is my father's legacy, yeah, yeah. is all right here, it's just, mm-hmm. yeah, a lot. And I don't want to be a Debbie Downer on all of this, but as a girl who doesn't have her parents, yeah. just call them, no. <laughs> just call them and tell them, you know, because there's so many times that I think now, especially as I go through different seasons of my life of, you know, moving, having Joe, and, like, I should start to think differently. Like, I lost them at, like, 22. I wasn't thinking about what it was like for my mom to be a mom, you know? And now I'm going through that season. I can't ask her. I can't thank her. I can't, you know, um, my me and my mom weren't super close. But now looking back, just the fact that I was alive, I'm like, man, you put in a lot of work. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, <laughs> so, like, thank you, you know? Yeah, um, you know I mean... So. It's always a good reminder. Yeah. yeah. Parents, we appreciate you. Yes. We love you. <laughs> All right, here we go. Next one. I don't want to cry anymore. You're okay. Love this one. I love the whole album. <laughs> this one's one of my favorites, yeah. I think. You know it scares me, but I ain't gonna leave. I just got a few things I really need to give. Off of my chest and out of my head. Cause lately I'm barely breathing. And all of this pressure I can't help but feel. It probably won't end well if I don't get real. Everybody wants something and then they want more. I can't shoulder it anymore. Been white knuckle just hanging on for dear life Meanwhile the clock's like a thief in the night Maybe tomorrow I'll finally decide To slow it all down While I still got time I hold a job down, but you hold my heart Know my intention and my every scar I gotta get back to what once was a fire Nothing means more than this love of ours I've been wearing up with just hanging on for dear life Meanwhile the clock's like a thief in the night
couple just hanging on for dear life Been white knuckle just hanging on for dear life Meanwhile the clock's like a thief in the night Maybe tomorrow I'll finally decide to slow it all Outside of the lyrics, because yeah. obviously they're a banger, but it, the melody is very, very pretty. Yeah. yeah. Am I the only one who got vibes that maybe that was to his wife? That uh, that's how I, I hear it. it. I thought he was talking to his wife. For me, that's how I hear it as well. I that he was it. just like, I don't know, the motions of life, and it was taking away from the beauty of like everyday life, you know. Mm -hmm. And always like, we'll we'll go on a date. At mm -hmm. some point, we'll have that yeah. us time at some point. And he's like, basically just, I don't know. There's been so many times in our marriage where I feel like the only reason we stuck together mm -hmm. was because we just, like, yeah. I don't know. Like he says, like the name of the song, like we just white knuckled it and was like, well, I'm not letting go, yeah. even though I'm not really, I'll get to it later. You know, yeah. I'm just going to hold on to this right now. There's no growth or yeah. any, like even pleasure in like the life you're living. You're just doing it so you don't lose everything. Yeah. And he talks all like he says this line right here a couple of times about like when I, while I still have got the time to do mm -hmm. it, um, kind of going into that last song of like, uh, eventually you will be old. Yeah. And you don't want to wait till you're old to do the things you wish you would have done while you're younger. I, we know so many couples, not that age is, doesn't necessarily make you like old and like I'm not saying if you're over a certain age you're old but like my grandparents are a great example they've been married over 50 years but they did the work 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 enjoy life when you're retired mm -hmm. and then they retired and they haven't even been retired 10 years and my my grandmother's mental health is so deteriorated now that they have a hard time enjoying the, and I'm not saying they didn't enjoy their time together but there was always that mentality of like well we'll enjoy life when we're retired and yeah. I feel like like you said, I feel like he's singing this to his wife of like, I kind of want to address this now, you know, while I still have the time so that we're not, we don't look back over our years and go like, our savings looks good and our mm -hmm. 401k looks good. But also like we didn't, we didn't make the albums we wanted to make. Like, yeah. I love the fact that you guys have the corny album you don't want to show anyone because you two <laughs> mm -hmm. have the memory of making that, even though we don't ever get the privilege of hearing it. No. Um, <laughs> you don't want to. <laughs> you don't want to. <laughs> but y'all have those memories, right? And, like, that only knits you closer together. And uh, we, and even as parents, like, having mm -hmm. Joe made us closer, but it's the memories we make with her. Mm -hmm. Her just existing didn't make us closer. Mm -hmm. It's the middle-of-the-night feedings and the trips to the park and, like, those kind of things. And so... Well, and it's like, you know, that's something me and Olivia talked about going into this year. We're like, mm -hmm. hey, we've been married, you know, going on four years now, and we haven't had a vacation with just us two. And it's like, you know what? Screw, like, bills will get paid because God's always provided, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. Like, even when we didn't have money, somehow the bills got paid, right? Yeah. So I'm not, I'm not worried about that. What I'm worried about is getting 10 years down the line when the day comes when we do have kids and mm -hmm. be like, hey, we didn't enjoy the two of us before that, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. So it's like, yeah. well, let's, let's do it. screw everything else. Screw, screw what the savings account looks like. Yeah. Screw what, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. what, you know, what we, if people think things we should be doing or mm -hmm. whatever, like, I just want to take, let's just take some time and, yeah. you know, yeah. be, be us, be, yeah. be. I, I struggle a lot with this mentality of like yeah. having to hold everything so tightly and not yeah. drop anything. And yeah. I've like, Literally in third grade, we had like a cursive writing assignment and I got an erasable pen. But like the teacher was like, if you make a mistake, you have to start over. And I sat there for five hours rewriting and rewriting and rewriting this page in third grade. Mm -hmm. My dad literally had to go have a conversation with the teacher and was like, this was too much pressure for her. She had like a full on <laughs> mental breakdown because she had to keep rewriting it. And I've just maintained that like yeah. intense pressure on myself my whole life. And I think just now, like yeah. just through conversations and like going through life together like this year I'm finally starting to be able because like when you do that for so long and you just put all this pressure and you're like just gotta do the thing and do it well like mm -hmm. for me I've struggled with like not even being present I'm just yeah. like I have to yeah. do this thing and do it well yeah and so I think that like 
Your life is like not even your own. Yeah, you just completely disassociate from like feelings and enjoying moments and because you're always thinking about the next thing or what you should be doing or yeah and so this speaks to me a lot just because I I'm just like always so intense about like making sure I'm doing the right thing at the right time perfectly and that it takes me to where I'm supposed to go like this big like supposed to thing yeah. And I've just always been As that if way. That is a thing. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Exactly. Well, and what's yeah. so cool is like we've seen you, we've known you guys long enough now. Like we've seen both sides of that. And me and Amanda talk all the time about like, not that there's like different versions of you guys or anything like that. But what I'm saying is like when you let those barriers down with people you're comfortable around, like that version of you is the version that everyone relates to more. Mm-hmm. And I think is the more impactful, like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. and we all know people who can flip that switch. And there are times where you need to be, like, if you're, if I'm going to preach a sermon, I need to put in the effort to make it good, right? But not at the extent of, or at the cost of, like, I'm not relatable anymore. You know yeah. what I mean? And so, yeah, that pressure is so, it can be overwhelming when we put it on ourselves. But on the other side of that, when you're able to finally get to that place of, like, you know, yeah. then then everyone else can see the real thing you're trying to accomplish and whatever that looks like yeah and it's literally what we talked about at the beginning of of this whole project is when you make something that's truly authentic and truly from yourself it's really raw but it's also really powerful you know Mm -hmm. um so no that's really good i also thought i don't know why my mind went to this on the last song um but like you know like when you're in especially like early 20s and you're, you say like, well, I'll become a Christian or I'll really dedicate my life when I'm older, when yeah. all the fun stuff is over. And that's also what I, it's like, yeah, but when that time comes, like, you've just wasted, you know, yeah. your years drinking or you've just wasted your years on things that you're going to regret or yeah. you've just wasted, you know, I don't know why my mind went went there, though, of like so many of us that were like, no, I'll really do this Christian yeah, thing later, yeah. you know, and... Well, you just put it off until eventually, like, I don't know, You like you said, you, you'll never... There's always going to be a day where you finally just have to say, okay, today's the day. Yeah. I'm just going to start doing it today. Yeah. Okay, next. Everyone good? I think... Is this the last one? Okay, all right, time out. Maybe this one's my favorite. <laughs> Maybe this one's my favorite. <laughs> I think this one's... I think... No, 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 no. no, no, no. Yeah. Oh no! This, we're this so, is the no, title track for more. the album. Title track, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. the one. Yeah. Uh-huh. I listened to it a million times over there. Miles and miles on a treadmill, mind. I'm running but not going anywhere. I close the blinds on the frontier light. I dressed it up as freedom, but it's fear Lost sight of who I am and why I'm here So free me from this fortress This prison that I've made With my civil life salvation And my big advance of faith My eyes on the horizon I cannot settle here How could I die in safety? I was born a pioneer And letting go I leave it all behind I'm parting ways with years of wasted time I'm moving now Of this old man's house Somewhere in me there's the wonder of a child And I wonder if I find him in the wild So free me from this fortress This prison that I've made With my civilized salvation And my picket fence of faith My eyes on the horizon, I cannot settle here. How could
could I die in safety? I was born a pioneer salvation and my pick, my, with my white picket, picket fence, fence of faith, faith. yeah, yeah. <laughs> what? well even the first line like it immediately got yeah. me <laughs> like just the how that was written I, i'm uh, telling y'all when i was like this is poetry like mm-hmm. it is 100 you know he put music behind it this is this is yeah. yeah what is the purpose like musically for the like long break in the middle yeah that's Cut. To make you sit there, or and like, or you just you can, want she's to hear all the music theory. Stuff yeah, music me. theory. Uh, I think I think there's a lot of uses for it. I think sometimes, I I I personally believe that people who don't sing and don't write lyrics, but they play they play instruments, like that is as much a form of expression for them mm-hmm. as it is for someone who writes and sings. Um, and so on one hand, I think that people, um, use it as a form of self-expression in that alone. Like, this is just what, this is the feeling that I'm having that I can, I can, uh, express through these notes that I play. Yeah. Um, so that's like more on the, like, artsy side of it, right? I didn't think about it like that. Um, and that's like something that I love like if I'm in a worship setting Mm -hmm. like even and we were talking before I don't remember this was at the beginning after we started or before the podcast like we've been doing this for a minute yeah I know I'm losing (laughs) track but you were talking about going and seeing that Hillsong Mm -hmm. concert and that guy playing guitar for 20 minutes Mm -hmm. and I absolutely believe that the spirit is carried not only through lyrics and vocals, but also through instruments. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I think a lot of people have a hard time grasping onto that. Yeah. And I think it's just, um, like for me, anytime that there's like no lyrics and stuff, I always um, close my eyes and see like what feelings like yeah. it gives me, you know. Um, a lot of A lot of times that's through just trying to learn how to create feelings like as a creator for other people when they listen to my music but also just enjoying like this is what that person was feeling was necessary for this song in this moment Mm -hmm. um and then the other side of that I think that there's a lot of practical uses for it like creating anticipation for the final chorus and creating a build and and um yeah I think uh I think in this case in this song it is just like a really slow build up to repeat these lyrics that have so much meaning and it just mm-hmm. kind of like refocuses your attention on the lyrics again. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. So there's a little bit yeah. of my yeah. opinion. No, I like that though, because that's, I'm that, I'm that person. And I don't know if you ever, I don't, it's really bright on the stage on Sunday mornings. Um, but I am not the most like, I don't, I, I do sing along um, one because I think it's important, but two, you guys are my friends, and I don't want you to feel like. I'm Thank you, I appreciate. That. I, I think that it's dog water or whatever, but for me, I'm the muse. Like, I I really get more ministry out of the musical piece than the lyrical piece. Like, and I can like I can obviously there are songs that the lyrics you know help me get there, but um, I'm much more of like a just soak in the moment and like 
it's more personal between me and God than like really, Eric, I'm the same way singing, too. And like, know? I have to be, I mean, you know, like from a leadership standpoint, obviously mm-hmm. you don't really, I mean, uh, unless someone else is leading a song or something, I like, you don't get that opportunity very often, mm-hmm. but from the other side, like if I'm not on the platform, I'd rather hear a sea of people sing mm-hmm. praise to Jesus than yeah. hear myself sing. I think it's yeah. so much more yeah. impactful for me to listen mm-hmm. and feel the emotions of the room mm-hmm. rather than participate. Yeah. Yeah. I know whenever I was writing sermons every week, I would turn on like either instrumental worship music or even just like worship pads. And like, I don't know, I felt more close with the spirit in those moments than I ever did singing a song. Yeah. Um, and I like the very last line here where it flips to this declaration. I think if there is any lyric that I do enjoy, it is it is the declarative piece of of music i know uh the the one that always comes to my mind first when i think about this in our church was the first time i ever heard alex sing yeah and he sang that song um egypt Mm -hmm. and i remember like because i'm over there in the corner i'm clapping i'm like like doing my part you know raise my hand in the chorus whatever and Mm -hmm. then he started like and i like like i cried like i had to leave the room because i was like dude like this like it affected me and so i just think like what you were talking about with that melody in the middle or whatever it, musically it's called mm-hmm. i don't know um that's for like i just take the time and i close my eyes and reflect like inwardly um she is and then i think also for the for the heart of the song i think we all had a dream about what we thought our life with jesus would look like when we were kids and at some point along the way we meet in the middle and go well this will work and I love that he says, like, he has to step back or go somewhere else to find that within him. Like, he has to, like, explore further than what he's around to, like, find the child in him again. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. maybe I'll find him out here where yeah. I don't let myself go most of the yeah. time. And, and it reminds me, like, so when we originally listened to this album, and podcast that doesn't know, we spent uh, six months on, on the mission field um, a year after we'd gotten married. And, like... When we got back, though, Hmm. like when we got back, it was so funny. And me and Olivia both talked about this. We spent, you know, we spent six months like day in, day out, sun sun up, sun down, like, you know, doing ministry and, you know, with people and these wild situations, all these different things. And then we came back and it was like planning center. And, <laughs> and 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 that was ministry, you know. Yeah. Um. And it was just, and it was culture, culture shock. shock. It was a yeah. major it culture. Was, it yeah. it felt like it almost felt like deja vu because we're like, did we just? And now and are we? Is this what yeah. we're doing now? Like, yeah. I don't know. I was in an orphanage last week. Yeah. I was in an orphanage. Like, you know, I was I was with I was with, you know, the gypsy community two weeks ago. I was, you know. I was loving mm-hmm. on kids who, who've been through, through some stuff yeah, that yeah, yeah. I couldn't imagine going through, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's like when, you know, and there's moments, and still now I have to take myself back. It's like when, when did it become normal? Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah I think Pastor Tyler, t- Pastor Tyler's yeah. been saying it. Like when, when, when did I get? I don't remember his actual verb. It's when I get comfortable with Jesus. Yeah. Familiar. Familiar. Yeah. yeah. And I think that's where we all get right, and we go. I really want to do this thing. But if this thing happens, I'll be okay. And it's like, like we even that way with our podcast. Like we want to do it. If it pops off, cool. If it doesn't, cool. But like, f- newly saved Eric was like, we're gonna do more than just a podcast. Like we're gonna minister to actual people in person, or like go do something in the community. Where now it's like, well, if I get views, like I, that's cool, you know, because then I can keep my house and I don't have to sell my car or like whatever, you know. And it becomes so like, what am I holding on to versus like. Truly, and I will say, if there's one thing I do love and honor about um, of our pastor, it's that it's that like open handed. I'll live wherever. I'll drive whatever. I'll wear whatever. Maybe not wear whatever. He's a little bougie with his clothes, but um, you know what I mean. Just that mentality of like, bro, he's had enough faith to live in multiple places. Allow God to move his family. Where I'm like, God, do whatever you want to do in my life, but my daughter's grandparents live here so if we could do it in nashville that'd be really (laughs) great you know what i mean because i really don't want to tell my mom i'm moving away kind of thing you know um and so yeah which speaking of that i think joe's away 
Amanda's going to make her a bottle. I don't know if she'll come back up here or not, so we'll keep rolling. Um, but um, if she does come back up and you hear Joe, um, that's too bad. She's my daughter, and she's cooler, <laughs> than, cooler than most of y'all anyway. And I think Amanda's heard. I think we've all heard this next song. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I, I think we should still do it because I think there's a reason why we've all heard it, and I think there's good in it. <laughs> yeah. That's it. Sometimes marriages don't work Sometimes babies die Sometimes rehab turns to relapse And you're left just asking why And for all the prayers I pray I still wonder if he's real And if he is, how is he choosing Who he does and doesn't heal I've tried to run from Jesus I've started holy wars I've tried the patient waiting And the kicking down the doors I've cursed his name in anger With my fist raised to the sky And in return All he's ever been is fine Burn my share of bridges I learned to tuck my tail and run To watch the wreckage in the rear view From all the crooked things I've done And I know that he forgives me But it's hard to forgive myself I can't help but think amazing grace Is for everybody else I've tried to run from Jesus I started holy wars I tried the patient waiting And the kicking down the doors I've cursed this day in anger With my fist raised to the sky And in return, all he's ever been is kind All he's ever been is kind I know I wasn't there But when I look up at the cross I see the darkest day in history And I guess that's what kindness cost I've tried to run from Jesus I've started holy wars I tried the patient waiting And the kicking down sooner um but i do think it's really yeah i think the lyric is we probably all almost maybe overheard it with like because that's what church does that's what church people do but um no i think it's we just, get we get like five good songs a year okay so <laughs> right? you know, like, yeah um, <laughs> easy easy uh, <laughs> i think the obvious illustration right is i did all of these bad things and god was still good to me i think the first time i listened to this song it was just kind of like Oh, wow, he said that. And then I was like, oh, wow, he said that. And I was like, yeah, I felt that. I felt that. And then you get all the way to the end of the chorus, and that hook line is just like where I just was like. Yeah. yeah. It was almost like, I know this, but it was just hearing it. Like, after I've done all of these things, and I feel like I've done all the right things, and I've tried, and then I've done all the wrong things, and I was still trying. And then it's like okay, you did all this, and literally the Lord's just been yeah. so yeah. kind. And I yeah. was just like, okay, <laughs> you didn't have to come at me like yeah, that. Right. <laughs> but yeah, I think it's such a good word choice, oh too, because I think we hear a lot that he's gracious and he's all-knowing and, like, you know, he's going to provide and all of these things. But I feel like kind is such a relatable word for I think for this whole album, I think that's what's kind of sets yeah. it apart is that it's just so palatable. Yeah. And, and so relatable. 
Yeah, and that that's the the thing is like that caught me is like yeah, he is he is kind and like that's a word that isn't a churchy word. That's not a word that I have to go look up the definition. He's just it's simply just kind. Yeah, and I I what what jumped out to me kind of what you were talking about Olivia with the first verse. And I think of all the things that has happened in my life that's made me mad at him. Not even just what I've done, but what I've been through. That's like, I didn't do anything. I remember we were when we were, not to tell the whole story, but I remember when we were youth pastors, we, we were 20 and 20, or I, you were 20, I was 21. And we had like five kids in our youth group. And two of them were brother and sister. And they were the oldest of four. And... So you had like eighth grade and sixth grade or something like that. And then they had a first or second grader. And then they had a two-year-old. And their two-year-old died in a super tragic accident in a church that only had like 100 people. And I remember like everything because I'm 19 or I'm 21. She's 20. I'm super arrogant in my preaching about like this is how good God is. Literally having been through nothing in my life, you know? And I'm like, if you're struggling because you don't have faith and like all these different things. And then, uh, I remember like we went to his funeral and if you've ever been to a funeral of a kid, like it's a different, it's a totally different event. And, uh, I remember leaving and thinking like, God, you suck. Like you suck, bro. Like that, where were you? You know? Cause it was an accident. It wasn't, you know, um, and so, I don't know, when I hear that, I think about my attitude after his funeral, my attitude after her parents' funeral, and, like, I don't know, it's not just I was bad and God was kind to me, but also, like, bad things happened and you were still good. Does that make sense? You know? Mm-hmm. It reminds me of God's goodness, even. And I think I even mentioned it in the second episode <laughs> of, like, yes, I, I lost my parents, and that's probably more tragic than a lot of people will have to go through. Um, but I've never lost a child. I've never had a miscarriage. I've never, and like, I can't, when people tell me stories like that, like, I'm just like, I've been through nothing in comparison to what you've been through. And, you know, like, it is, it's just crazy. And, but yeah, God is good. Mm-hmm. And the the one line that I, I can't help but think that amazing grace is for everybody else, yeah. bro. If that if that don't speak for every person that's yeah. ever worked yeah. in a church, been in some type of nonprofit or ministry, if you ain't feel that one, you don't feel. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like you know what I mean. Yeah. Um, do you want to put yeah. Miss Rachel back on over there for? We have like two left. Yeah, I'll can you use my phone? Oh, okay. 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 All right. I must have tried most everything It ended all the same For good and bad I realize Only Jesus for my pain Designer jeans and pretty things In the end they fade It took the dust to realize Only Jesus for my pain Only Jesus knows the questions The things I'm scared to say Only Jesus holds the answers To the troubles I can't face And every single road I take Leads right back to this place Only Jesus for my pain And every time I try to run His kindness called my name You'd think that I'd have learned by now Only Jesus for my pain Only Jesus knows the questions The things I'm scared to say Only Jesus holds the answers To the troubles I can't face And every single road I take Leads right back to this place Only Jesus for my pain
Thought I'd live to see the day That I could outgrow graves But since I'm on my knees again Seems this is where we meet again Only Jesus for my pain And I wouldn't change a thing That's it, bro. No, that's good. I I think. I right, someone else go. I mean, it's just right, it is the simplicity of the gospel. Yeah. It just shows me how much like other stuff I go to. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, and like we don't, and like I'm not a drug user. I'm not a drinker. I'm not like those are the things the church always goes to, right? But I'm a I'm a, a Madden player. You know, I'm a Fortniter. I'm a Netflix watcher. I'm a whatever. It's like, oh, I'm going through a hard time. I really can't wait for Joe to go down for a nap. Not so I can go pray, but so that I can go play and be uninterrupted. Or I can go mow and just stare at the yard. Like, whatever my thing is, you know, it just reminds me of, like, and the, the line at the end about, like, outgrowing grace. You know, like. Yeah. I'd live to see the day that I would outgrow <laughs> grace. Yeah. I just, I don't know. It's just very humbling of, like. Do I really only go to Jesus for those things? So, and if she's getting too rowdy, I can put her over there. I think we only have one left. I don't think she's touching it. Yeah, I, I don't see her in any of these, but um, and she's also cooler than anyone. Listening, yeah, so I'm fine I mean, it's it. just an she's honor just to up, have her here. She's throwing honestly. up peace on to the camera. Let her, yeah, let her do is. her thing. And dad, dad's like her word of the day. Yeah, yeah I, I love it. Love yeah, it. <laughs> <laughs> so great. Stroking your ego Dude, right now. I love it, man. What's up, yo? You're so cool. You're so pretty. Okay. All right, everyone good? I think this is the last one. I feel like Only Jesus for My Pain is like closer to like more of like a hymn kind of feel. Yeah. And that's mm. what I like. Yeah. It, it's yeah. it stood out to me on the album like sonically. Uh just for like that kind of thing. It just was very repetitive but in like like you're sitting in a pew in an old church kind yeah. of way, you know? Yeah. And it's just like well, it's like one of those songs that's just like, it's just a good reminder. And that's yeah, like what so. a lot of hymns are. It's just like a reminder yeah. of who Jesus is and and just like, this is what we should do, guys. Come on. Yeah. like. But how many artists, again, especially for you guys' perspective, how many artists are always trying to find the next cool thing to like talk about or like a new lyric that sounds good or like brings new perspective? And it's like, bro, people, I think a lot of people listening don't need new perspective. They need to be reminded of the stuff that they're not doing that is beneficial you know remember where you started yeah just remember you know you know remember what you fell in love with like i think a lot of times you know whether we're talking about jesus whether we're talking about your marriage or you know whatever it is it's like well take some take some time remember like why 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 why'd you start yeah you know oh i can't see jesus in my life right now you you know and some tyler says a lot and and i love it and i and i and i feel it 100 percent you can't, you can't tell me he's not real. I, I've, yeah. you know, I've seen too much. <laughs> I've yeah, walked yeah. through too much. I've, yeah. you know, yeah. He's he's been too good. Yeah. To mm-hmm. so it's like, oh well, you know, this thing happened. I don't see Jesus right now. Screw you. Like I, I, I can't see you right now. And it's like, bro, did you forget who yeah. I am? Yeah. Like yeah. Well, I think we forget, of course, like based off of that song, like the topic of it, we forget all the time what Jesus has really done, like to get us through things. Because, like, I can turn on my Xbox and immediately my stress goes away. Where sometimes spending time with Jesus, if we're honest, it doesn't immediately go away. You know, like I pray and then I say amen and I'm still stressed. Um, and so, yeah, like you said, just reminding, like, it's easy, it's easy to forget, like, you know, just how good he's been and the things that he's brought us through, you know. So, all right, let's do it. May the road rise up to meet you, the wind be at your back. May the sun shine warm upon you, may there be nothing that you lack. And may your heart be forgiving, even when they do your own. Let your lonely soul be filled with a song 
Until we meet again And I know you're in good hands The road may wind and the river sea bends But I hold you in my heart Until we meet again Hey man, it's only money Love's the one thing you can't buy and May the rain fall soft upon your fields Bless the fruit of the vine And heaven gather all your tears And turn them into wine Until we meet again I know Just say God's speed, my friend Until we meet again I know we're in good hands The road may wind in the river she bends I hold you in my heart Until we meet again It's not as heavy to me personally. Mm-hmm. It doesn't hit me as like spiritually heavy. Um, I think there's a lot of angles you could probably interpret that from. I for me, I we talked earlier about like the one felt like it was to his wife. I think the biggest vibe I get from that, I almost feel like he's talking to the community that this album was for. Yeah, like yeah. to the listeners. It's yeah. almost like it's reminiscent and forgive me, I don't know anything about this, but it makes me think of um uh the song, the the scripture that the song, The Blessing, is based off of, and I'm the sorry, it's the, the priestly blessing yeah. is kind of like what this is reminiscent of to yeah. me, and like speaking that over his listeners and stuff. Yeah. Well, I and I heard it, and, and I was thinking about this because of what you were telling us before, this being like his his exit from vocational ministry, it mm-hmm. almost seemed like to his church. Like, yeah. that's how I, mm-hmm. that's like what I heard it, and I was like, oh, like, that's cool, and, and like relatable. It's like, mm-hmm. you know, this isn't. Anybody going nowhere, mm-hmm. but like I'll see you later. You know, mm-hmm. We're, let's take a let's take a break from. Yeah, what vibe? I know I didn't get any of that. Yeah, what vibe did yeah. you get? I I mean, from I guess just because of my personal history, it's you lost somebody, um, and I that's I mean, the, literally the only hope you have is that they're somewhere else in better hands than they were here, yeah. um, and we get to see them again. Yeah, no, and I think I think that's why I love doing this, like as a group, because everyone has yeah. a different, a different take. way of seeing it. And I think, like you said, to someone who's lost, someone hears that and hears something different than we do. You know? Yeah. Um, no, I think that song is great. I think that album yeah. was. It, that's amazing. It's a top to bottom um, album. Yeah, it's it's really good. It really ministers. I think not just to my heart, but I think to the heart of the people we're trying to reach. Yeah, for sure. Um, and so, if you haven't. Go listen to Pioneer, the album. Um, I think it's really, really good. Corey, like Nick said, if you're watching this, uh, at Nico.Raps. I can't. Um, <laughs> yeah. I, that's really all that I can think of. Any final thoughts on on anything anyone wants to add? 
We're just thankful to be here. Yeah. Thank yeah. you for asking us to do this. No, yeah. Thank you guys for it's doing an honor. it. It's really easy for us to talk about something we're yeah. both very passionate yeah. about. Yeah. So. It's also easy just for us to hang out with, with you guys. With you guys, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. There's yeah. that part, I think, too. I think that's part of it, too, is like cameras and mics or no cameras and mics. We probably would have yeah. done this anyway. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. So that's been really cool. Um, Joe's excited to be here. Bro, she's just excited to be awake now. Yeah. She's like, oh, she's yeah. fresh yeah. wind. Did you like but. to say something? but no thank you guys um again and we'll have links in the description for not only obviously how to get a hold of us but also how to follow and subscribe not just to us but to you guys as well um because they make amazing music amazing content we have to plug the merch that we're oh, wearing and then the merch yeah so i'm we wearing have, one too uh, <laughs> nick's not because he's lame sorry i suck <laughs> so olivia's rocking our uh therapy is a biblical sweater uh that's been a hot one um i've got our resting doesn't equal quitting hoodie and then amanda's rocking just our basic uh broom tree logo um but no we're excited um and then we've actually been asked this um already by a couple of people so really honestly if we're just very practical uh it goes to support the podcast right so we can continue to get content out there uh, at the end of the day mics cost money um things like that cables uh tripods lights like you name it um and so yeah just check it out if you like it if not whatever that's cool too and don't buy um, but yeah no all the links for everything you need will be in the description and again guys thank you all so much and um that's all i got all right peace